Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I give you my first impressions on the new Sony A7R II. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in Paris, France, but also in Los Angeles, California. And I make one to two tutorials per week. Now, click here if you want to subscribe to my newsletter and get one of the biggest collection of free RAW files on the planet. All you have to do is click here to sign up to my website. You put in your email, you create an account, and then you can access all the free lessons. And each free lesson has source files, which are RAW files, preset, Lightroom presets, brushes for free. Thousands. All you have to do is subscribe. Okay. Also, if you want to follow me on YouTube, click here. Or if you want to follow me on Instagram, that's new. I'm big time into Instagram now. It's at PhotoSurge at PhotoSurge. Voila. I want to talk to you about the Sony A7R II. I finally got a hold of it. I finally bought it and I'm really blown away. And I want to tell you why I think it's really worth the upgrade. Here it is. All right. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So before we get into uh, the camera itself and I want to show you some of the menus and you know how to use it if you've never used a Sony A series camera, I want to talk to you for me the one main option that for me is worth the upgrade and that is the optical stability of the Sony A7R. As you guys probably know if you follow my podcast I shoot a lot of sunset. Now I also like to shoot by hand because sometimes you don't you cannot always have a tripod because for security reasons you, you know if you go on the top of some of Notre Dame or the Arc de Triomphe in Paris tripods are not allowed and I have that very often or when you're shooting inside so being able to shoot without a tripod is something that's very important for me and I wanted to challenge this now to get you an idea when I was shooting with the Sony A7R the technique that I would use to shoot a, a tripod without a tripod is I would put the timer the speed on 130, 140 of a second. Uh, I would open my aperture as much as I can, usually at f4, and then I would just play around with the ISO until I've got a sharp photo. Now, this camera, because of the optical stabilization, I have been able to go, and if you check this out, at 113 of a second at f4 instead of 130 of a second. That is almost five more f stop. Basically, this means that this photo, for example, I have been able to shoot it at 640 ISO uh, instead of like probably 3000 ISO. And that's a huge deal for me. It's a new era of photos for me because I can now go to places where tripod are not allowed and get a much more quality or much more later in the night photo. Uh, so you can see at 1.13 of a second, I was I put the timer on for two seconds, I was not breathing, but the photo is sharp and it's, it's usable. It's not the best, but it's it's kind of usable. Uh, also, the size are huge. It's seven, almost 8,000 pixel wide, which is great because you can, you know, crop a lot and still get a lot of information. So just to show you a few other photos that I did, I went the opposite on this one. I, I put in, uh, I went on a tripod at, sorry, at 13 seconds of exposure. Uh, because, you know, when I shoot at night, I like to have the star trails. Now, I don't like the white balance of this photo. I'm not going to retouch it, but I just really don't like the white balance. I think it would add some magenta and warm it up or something. Uh, but here, the same situation, the same thing again at one thirteenth of a second. So now the water is very crisp instead of being, you know, uh, of being very smooth. I had to boost the ISO at 1250, but it's still very decent because if I now take out you know, the noise sharp noise reduction, if I put it like around 30 and put some sharpening, I still get a very usable photo, you know. So sharper, sharpening around 70, noise reduction around 30, and masking around 50. I still get a very decent photo at 1250 ISO. Uh, this is another photo that I took at 1 13th of a second uh, that is sharp, and that's another one I took at 1 13th of a second that is sharp uh, at 2500 ISO but I still think it's about the max, but it's still usable. So I get five more f-stop and that's huge. That means you can shoot later. You, you can shoot without a tripod. Uh, this is another photo that I shoot and I retouched it a little bit that I shoot at one fifth of a second without a tripod, one fifth and it is sharp. I mean, it's crazy. This is something that was not possible before. For me, this is a new, uh, you know, 
ability because you can really like shoot you know for example uh, inside houses in parties and still uh, get a very sharp sh sh uh, shots the only thing you have to worry about is you have to put the timer on and of course you should not take anything which is moving and just to show you also the quality of a night shot this is 25 seconds of exposure um, shooting the Hollywood I'll do a tutorial on how I did this photo this is but the dynamic range is really good because uh, the light was crazy. Th this was a huge dynamic range situation. This was just one photo uh, that I shot with, uh, you know, it's not an HDR. And I, I, I was able to get still the letters in white and still get, you know, s uh, the, the highlights of the CD without having too much burn. I mean, I made it burn a little bit of, on purpose, but that's a crazy dynamic range and it worked out really well. So I'm very happy about it. Now I'm going to show you a bit more of the camera itself and some of the cool settings. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So uh, this is the Sony A7R. I'm just going to show you a few basics and a few settings that I do when I always buy a, a Sony camera. There's a few things I like to change on it. Uh, first, well, I've put the 1635, which I'm using a lot these days, you know, to do a wide a landscape which I really like. Uh, the, not much has changed with the Sony A7R 2 It's a bit heavier, about 200 grams heavier. And uh, usually what I do is I either shoot in AV mode or manual mode. So to shoot in AV mode, you basically uh, press this button and that's new and you turn the wheel and you have this on A for aperture value. And then what I do is I play around with the here, with that wheel, which is very important when you shoot in aperture value, which is the exposure compensation. I always usually put it like minus a third of a, of a stop or two thirds of a stop under. The reason is because the computer that's inside of the camera, when it shoots something, usually for me, it makes it a bit too bright, especially when there is a sunset or clouds. And I like to really have very dense sky. So that's why I use the, uh, the compensation. Now, the way I work with this camera is I also like to shoot in manual. So I usually turn the wheel and put it on manual. And when I put it on the manual, what I want to do is have this wheel. You see here, there's a wheel here in front. And this wheel, I want this wheel to change the aperture. You see, uh, I'm at F4, I'm going to F13. So this wheel changes the aperture. This wheel changes the speed. And I want this wheel to change the ISO. Now, by default, it's not the case. By default, you have to click right and then uh, change the ISO. But I don't like that because I'm changing the ISO all the time and I'm going to show you how to program this a little bit later. So now I have programmed this on something else. When I press play, I like to check that uh, my photo is sharp. So by default, if you press C3, it's going to punch in at 100%, especially with a 46 million pixel. And then you can zoom in on your photo and make sure you are sharp. That's very important to me. That's something that I use all the time. Okay. Now you also have here another button, which is very useful. It's called function. And what it does is you can program what you want to change. For example, this is the focus area. You know, if I want different uh, parts of focus, I usually shoot on a wide or a zone, uh, one of the first default settings, but you can, you can program anything that you want. And I will show you how you can do this a bit later on. Also, when you look through the viewfinder, you have different display mode. This is display mode, so you can click here and just go through the different displays. I usually go for something very subtle where I only have the speed, the aperture and the ISO and that's it. Okay, so let's talk menu a little bit and let's talk the, the things that I usually do when I when get one of the cameras. So to go through the menu, you use this wheel. Uh, you have a little tab menu. If you want to change tab, you can go on top and you go left. So that's the first tab. Aspect ratio, I always put it at 3.2, very important. Uh, quality, row, row files type compressed. That's a new thing. You can do compress or uncompress. I choose compress. Okay, when you click here, you come to the second menu of that first tab. Uh, file format, now you got two uh, file format, which is XAVCS HD and XAVCH as 4k this will only run with special sd cards you have to google this uh, reference and then you'll buy special very fast sd card that's going to work with them and you're going to get awesome videos i don't have i have a very standard very cheap sd card in this i don't shoot with it with, with this one for now so i have it on avchd that works with most sd card for now record settings uh, you got 60 image and 24 image i like to go 24p uh, 24m 
that it's just the quality. 24M is going to be a better quality than 17M. So, and 24, I choose 24 because it's uh, uh, movies are often in 24. Okay, and I like that. Is bracket settings. You have a new option where you can put a self timer during bracketing, which I did. By default, it was not. I put two seconds, meaning that it's uh, when I go into a bracketing mode, if I press the shutter, it's going to wait two seconds and then it's going to take all my photos in one shot. And that's something that's new and that's really cool because then I don't have to use a remote when I do HDR, which I really appreciate. Next, uh, which I'm not going to go through is so many things, and this is a very first impression video. Uh, I am just want to see uh, steady shots, as you will see, as I told you in a video, it's very important, but by default that's on. And um, that's about it. Okay, second tab, uh, ma um, manual focus assist, that is very important. I, it, by default it's off and I always put it on and that's going to mean that when you're going to be using the AV mode or the manual mode and you zoom to f when you, you want to focus, it's going to patch in, it's going to zoom in at 100% to make sure you're sharp. This is something that I use all the time, very important. Okay, um, now peaking level and peaking colors. That is something that I use all the time because unfortunately uh, when you shoot landscape very dark at night or when you shoot portrait with uh, a very shallow depth of field, it's hard to get the precise focus that you want. So then I go into manual focus and to make sure that my manual focus is good, I have the punch in, but I also have the peaking level that's helping me. By default, it's at, z at zero. So when you click on peaking level, it's off. Uh, and the peaking color by default is white. And I always put it on red. I find it's easier to read. Okay, so just to show you an example of uh, how to use the manual focus and, uh, and the peaking. So remember, I went into menu and I made sure MSF assist is on. Then I made sure that peaking level uh, was high and on red. Once you have that, I'm in AV mode now. You, um, C3 by default is a focus mode. Make sure you're in manual focus. And then when you're in manual focus, I find it really handy because check this out. I'm in my office and this is, I'm changing the focus point. Now here, you can, I'm zooming, when I'm touching this, when I'm touching the lens, it's zooming in 100%, okay? So I'm really punching. And you can see there's a bit of red on my piano. That means the piano is in focus. And this little machine here in front is out of focus. And you can see here, when I'm moving this around, it says I'm, my focus point is two meter. Two meter, okay? Now, if I change this, and I go to up the other way, I go to 40 centimeter. Yes, and you see now the red is here on the machine and the piano is out of focus and it says 0.4 meter, 0, 40 centimeter. So that's something that I use all the time when I'm not autofocusing. So you either use the function of autofocus, which is here all on top, autofocus S, which is the best, and then you let the camera do, or you used the manual focus, but I advise you to use punch in manual focus at 100% and I advise you to use the peaking, which is really handy to see what is really sharp. One thing that I do often is I ask my model to put her hands next to her eyes, make sure that there is some red on her eyes and I know I'm super sharp focus. Okay, so that's the peaking and that's the peaking color. Let's see whether options I wanted to show you that could be useful when you get started. There's so many options. I could go on for hours. Oh yes, function menu set. That's what I was talking to you, this button here. Uh, when you click functions, you see there is different areas here and you can assign this little square to a different functions. Let me show you how. So you, I click back on menu, you click on function menu settings. So you see every square is like upper one, upper two, upper three, upper four. So the first one is drive mode, etc. To be honest, I don't use this function uh, key so much because I like to do everything with what I have here. For example, I program for the ISO to be, uh, sorry, for the picking to be when I click on ISO and for the ISO to be up and down when I use the wheel. So wheel is going to make the ISO go up and down. And instead of clicking right here, instead of having ISO, which is what you have by default, I have the little picking values. So how did I do that? Well, I went to menu and I went to custom key settings. And on the control wheel, I clicked OK and I choose ISO. By default, it was, uh, I forgot what it was, it was something else, okay? And then 
I click here for the next menu and then on the right button here, right button, I choose peaking level. This way, like my basic idea is to never go into menus. I have everything. So I have the aperture, which is here. I have the speed, which is here. I have my compensation, which is here. I have my ISO, which is here. And I, I click here. That's the one. I didn't change this one by default. I've got a focus mode. When I go here on the left, I've got what they call the drive mode. And the drive mode is really cool. That's the, um, uh, that, that's, you know, when you change to put like the timer on two seconds, that's when you do bracketing. Oh, the last thing I want to show you is how to do bracketing. Uh, so I'm going to fake it. I'm going to go into manual mode. I'm going to make, uh, the cap is on, so it's, it's, it's not going to matter. Okay. So I put one fortieth of a second F4 ISO 400. These are fake figures. Let's say that I had a nice scene. I wanted to do bracketing. Now with the new option that I showed you at the beginning, uh, with the uh, bracketing option where you can put a timer, what happens when you go to, sorry, when you go to drive mode here, you can uh, take bracketing. Now on bracketing, you see here, it says two, two EV and then three. So EV stands for exposure value. Okay. And three stands for photo. So that means that this photo is going to be minus two, normal plus two. Okay. And because I have it set on, uh, on continue, because I have it set on continue, so it's going to take all three photo. Let me show you. So if I try to take a photo, it's going to wait two seconds and it's going to take the three photos. I'm, all three photos are going to be dark on this one, but that's, that's the idea. Uh, and for this, you just have to make sure that the bracketing option I showed you at the beginning was on. Okay. And so the drive mode you have, uh, you can take single shot bracketing single. Oh yeah. By default, you don't have the two exposure value three. What you have by default is something like this. So you have to go with the right or the left to choose. Like for example, now I'm at 0.7 exposure value for three photos. If I go to the right, I'm now at 0.7 exposure value, five photos. Uh, if I go to the right, I'm now at exposure, uh, exposure value 1.7, uh, nine photos. And if I continue, now I have one. One exposure value, three photos. So I did that until I had two exposure value, three. That's what I like. That's my settings for HDR that I like, okay? And timer, I use a lot of the timer with all the photos that I showed you that I took at 1 8th or 1 13th of a second. I always have the self timer on. So voila, that's how I got my Sony A7R up and running. Hope you learned a couple of things on this. And uh, I will see you in another episode, mesdames et messieurs. Au revoir. Do you want to get hundreds of raw files from all over the place where you can play around with? Do you want to get amazing free Lightroom presets, free brushes, free Photoshop actions, all you have to do is enter your email address. You will receive an email. You can then create an account and then you can access this free lesson tab. You can choose from over 200 free lessons. Every free lesson is going to have source files for you to download and play around with. It's a great way to learn photography, learn post-processing for nothing. No money. It's all free. It's a gift to you as a member of photosearch.com. So thank you and welcome and let's do some photos together.